We're in Heidelberg, Alaska here. It is February, cold time of the, the year. Just like many other lost traditions, seal hunting to the Haida people was once a very important part of our, our society and our food system. I think a lot of practices that we've had traditionally are lost now. This hunt was very, very special to me because I've always held such high interest in hunting seal and figuring out how to make use of this part of our, our land that is so prevalent in Haida culture. You've got your fishermen, you've got your hunters, you've got your berry pickers, yet very few people go after seal. One of our most prized possessions in our community of Heidelberg is our Tonopol Park. It displays all of the major clans that came and gone from Heidelberg. In the centerpiece of our Tonopol Park is a carved rock, a couple hundred years old, of a seal. Not a lot of people know why it's there, but obviously it's there because seal held some sort of significance to our people. It's real important that we use that symbol of the seal as a way to get back into that subsistence lifestyle and then start to use that energy source to continue to fuel ourselves into the future. So much was lost over time on just this process. It wasn't just a simple type thing. It was a family thing. It was a social gathering, planning for the future, sharing knowledge, you know, just a tradition that's just passed down. So yesterday we got ready for our hunt. We touched bases on what time we were gonna meet at the dock, what kind of equipment we had to bring. We had to bring you know, our guns for hunting and getting the seal. We had to bring a hook and a pole to retrieve the seal out of the water. We had dressed all warm and ready for a day of hunting on the water. We met at the dock in the early mornings, headed out. The weather was, it was nice out, sunny, but very windy, very cold. And we went and checked a couple spots. We looked at some otters. We finally got to a spot where we were seeing a couple seals, so we put one group of us onto a rock and played the waiting game while another group on the boat went out and ran around the seals in hopes that it would push one in close to us to where we can get a shot. When they come out of the water, they're going to exhale. And then that second, two seconds, you get to see them, they'll exhale. And when they come back out of the water, they take another breath of air. So that would be kind of the time to go ahead and pull the trigger if your crosshairs are on them. <laughs> And it played out just like that. We ended up getting a seal in shallow water. It didn't sink, thankfully, and we were able to retrieve it. And then we just went on to processing it, cutting it up. The heart is gonna be beating a little bit afterwards, so just go ahead and try to poke the throat, poke the veins, 
we go ahead and clean it right on the spot. The longer you leave it dead and intact, there's parasites and stuff inside that get out of the stomach, get into the meat, get into whatever. So we try to harvest it right away. It's basically the same thing as anatomy of a deer. When you're harvesting a deer, just cut down through the fat, through the skin, get down to the tissue, cut up further on the seal through the rib cage. And then you could reach inside and you could grab the esophagus and pull everything out. Roll the seal onto the side somewhat. The guts will come out and you just open the seal up right on the butthole part. You're gonna cut around, cut around on the inside and you can pull everything out. And then you just harvest the small intestines, pull those out, clean it, braid them. We continued to cut it up and process and, and quarter it out, we call it, at the dock. With our seal hunt this year, we wanted to make it a point that the, the younger generation comes down and witnesses what's going on. And we had the Hansonite group, that's a Haida class group. My little grandson was down there yesterday, he was 16 months old, and so he grabbed the seal, touched it, he got a smell of it, and so just a little bit, so we were trying to pass it on to youngsters. Seal hunts used to be a community gathering type of hunt, type of processing. People would come by and do it. They enjoyed it. They'd tell stories when they did it. They would laugh. They would share as a social type of event. With it being kind of a lost tradition now, we don't have that. So the significance of the younger children coming down to watch us played a more important role as the actual seal. And then after that, it brings us to, to what we got going today, which is we rendered the fat down and cut up some meat and pretty soon gonna enjoy the fruits of our labor and eat in the seal meat. You harvest the seal, we're gonna go ahead and get the fat into chunks like this. Just cut it into smaller pieces. Just put it into a cast iron pot under heat. And then the heat itself is gonna extract the fat that's out of it. Render seal fat like this probably 15 minutes if even that, on a low heat. This is already rendered seal fat. We have some liquid gold right here. Seal has all of the fat on the outside of it. And then the seal meat itself was right here. The seal itself was on the inside. This is the seal for Conjunctive fat was right here. We cut the fat and the hide right off of the seal meat. We just took the head off, we took the fins and the flippers off, everything on the inside, soft organs and stuff, took those out. This is the backbone, cut the uh, ribs off, and we're just gonna take these and cut them into even smaller chunks. The so ribs and stuff are gonna be day long or so. We just cut those right down the center, cut them into smaller pieces, the shoulders and everything, just into just into manageable chunks. This seal right here, I'm just gonna throw it into a big old aluminum pot, add some water to it, a little bit of salt. Some folks even use salt water to cook theirs in, but I'll just do that. I'll just put a little bit of water, a little bit of salt, and then just bring it to a boil and then run it down to a slow boil for four hours or so. A lot of folks just cook theirs hour, two hours. Folks liked it a little better when I cooked it a little longer. It made the meat just a little softer to chew on. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, you got tired jaws and such chewing on the meat. Two, three months after the salmon run, December or so would be a good time on up to April, May. Not much salmon around, so seal is going to be nice and mild, a good mild flavor to it. Versus when we get a salmon, lots of salmon around, they eat a lot of salmon, you're going to get a really strong gamey taste out of it. A lot of folks don't care for it that way. There's a lot to eat out of a seal, and each thing has can feed a family of six easy. The hide itself is used for a decorative thing. Creative people can make a whole pile of different things out of this, from hats to vests to gloves. We go out and we harvest it and we cook it, let folks know they show up.
you know, our elders enjoyed the process of harvesting, processing, and then sharing. And uh, here we live in a pristine environment and access to wealth of resources, and uh, we use very little of them. And so when you see seal hunting uh, becoming uh, something that doesn't happen, it isn't uh, part of our daily and routine activity that uh, once was, it's important for us to get that activity back into our community and culture so that we can give these younger guys a purpose to get out to hunt, to fish, and bring back uh, good quality meat and fat.